Roberto, I'd like to once again come back to this uh, story about the kid from the other side of the Atlantic. I know you've spoken a great deal to Rete Guy over the last few days. Do you think it's so difficult to actually explain to him how he needs to conduct himself within the Italy setup, or do you think his instinct uh, as a he reminds me of Martin Palermo. Do you think his attacking instincts might be enough for him to hit the ground running with Italy? I think it's not necessarily very easy to join up with the Italy set up and actually coming into the national team as opposed to a club side. So I think it will take time. He needs to get to know his colleagues, but he's very switched on. He's a very polite young man and he's a good striker. He's young, of course. We have great faith in him, but we also need to afford him a bit of time. Media set. And if there are any other questions, give me a wave. A question to Marco, first and foremost. What have you made of Retegi, this new colleague that you have in the national team? And Roberto, what are you most wary of with regards to this latest edition of Italy-England compared with the three times you've played them in the past? No, of course we haven't had a chance to train a great deal with him because uh, we've had uh, two very busy days of uh, training. As the gaffer has said, he's uh, a very well-mannered, switched-on kid. He's made a good impression on me. And as the head coach has said, we need to give him a bit of time. It's not easy by any means. He's only trained twice with us, but physically he looks like he's up to it and... Uh, he wants to be there, and I'm sure he can give us a big helping hand. And on England. It's become a bit of a classico, Italy-England. This is the fourth time we've come up against them in two years. I think England are one of the best sides in the world. They've got an extraordinary group of players available for selection. They've always been very unlucky. And I think that it will be a pretty tough match tomorrow night. We'll try and play our own game because we want to start our campaign well. It won't be easy, but I think the same goes for both sides. Before the next question, let's allow the Napoli president, the mayor of Naples and the Italian FA president join us. And uh, we will have the Mayor of Naples will be recognizing the uh, President of the FA at the end of the press conference. We've got a question from an English colleague. No, I haven't been contacted or called up by anyone, and I don't think anyone will contact me. I have paid my uh, taxes. It's all above board, so I don't think anyone will be in touch. Pizza Ferrato, where you go? A question for Roberto. What do you expect from the Napoli crowd? At this moment in time, they're very focused on what could be a historic achievement uh, in terms of winning the Scudetto. Do you think that the crowd will be distracted by their other goal, or do you think they'll get behind the national team? No, I think Italy have always been helped out by the crowd whenever they've come to Naples, and I think it will be even more the case given the way Napoli are playing at this moment in time. So I think they'll give us the usual helping hand, which will be very important tomorrow night. 41,000 tickets have been taken up out of 47,000, so we hope to get very close to a sellout tomorrow night. Any questions for Verratti and the head coach? De Magistris and then Brusorio. Okay, we'll go with Brusorio La Stampa first. Good evening, Roberto. 
Italy are going very well in terms of club football at this moment in time, but as you and Allegri have said, the issues haven't necessarily been overcome. How much are you keen to have Italy as the driving force, the national team as the driving force for the Italian game? Given that you've failed to qualify for the World Cup. I think it comes down to us. We need to try and reproduce what we've done in the past. We need to go back to playing very well out there on the pitch, play well, entertain people and win matches. I think that's absolutely crucial to once again be what we were in the past ahead of Euro 2020. Maybe something has changed in the intervening period, but that doesn't mean we can't necessarily repeat what we've achieved in the past. De Magistris, and then we've got a, a colleague over here immediately after. Hi, Gaffer. I'd like to come back to Retegi. You've watched him train in person for three days. Can you explain to us what sort of striker he is? And as you said, it's not easy to move from Argentina to Italy. Do you think he could start tomorrow night? He's a traditional classic centre forward. Uh, a lot of people compare him to Herman Dennis. But I've heard some, you know, it's all been a little bit over the top. I remember when Gabriel Battistuta came to Italy. But, you know, this guy is, uh, is, is very young. He still needs to get used to his uh, teammates. It's not easy. He's a young kid. But as I said, he's, very, he's got a good head on his shoulders, and I don't think it'll take him too long. I don't work for the police force, if I'm quite honest. But it's always been actually the away fans that have come here and have caused problems, typically. And we saw that in the Champions League. So I think if people come here and behave correctly, I don't think there should be too many issues on that score. But we need to think about footballing matters, what happens on the pitch. We hope that nothing comes to pass because football should be a celebration for everyone. Another colleague. It's very emotional, obviously, because it's the first time we've played a game since Luca's passing. We were very fortunate to have him, me as uh, a teammate, and also to have worked alongside him. You were lucky enough to have him in London, and he'd almost become an honorary Londoner. And so you'll have seen what he's all about. It is with great sadness, but people like him will always be close to us. They are immortal. He will always be with us. So, just to benefit for the uh, British colleagues, there will actually be a special message on the Italy shirts tomorrow in honour, in uh, homage to Gianluca Vialli tomorrow. Good evening, Roberto. The first time you took over the Italian national team, it was a very similar situation. We hadn't qualified for the World Cup. We were trying to qualify for the European Championships, which we went on to win. And it's the same situation this time around. What differences have you noticed, both for you, both for the environment, the mood around the camp, the players? What has changed between then and now? We went from a triumph 
to a huge disappointment, winning the Euros and then not qualifying for the World Cup. But uh, f football can be very cruel because uh, occasionally the things come to pass that you don't deserve. And I don't think the team deserved that. Despite the fact we didn't qualify for the World Cup, we were able to qualify twice for the final phases of the UEFA Nations League. It doesn't seem that important, but it is. So we can't necessarily say that we've been less good. I do think we were unfortunate. Of course, we made some mistakes. But now we're starting again. We have forgotten that disappointment, and we need to start again with the same targets in mind. No, we have some young players who are not with us at this moment in time, but who could have easily joined up with us, who I can also introduce over the course of this qualifying period, which starts now and comes to a close November of next year. But, uh, of course, we have the Nations League that we want to win, and then we want to try and qualify for uh, Euro 2024 as uh, holders. I think that's positive. Taormina il mattino. Is there something about this Napoli side that are dominating Serie A that you'd like to see within your Italy squad in terms of attributes? De Laurentiis, the Napoli president, is listening to you. Is there something that you think we could uh, have that would help grow the game in Italy? I think Napoli have produced excellent football right from the word go. They've always qualified for the Champions League. They've always been challenging in the upper reaches of Serie A for the last decade or so. So I think uh, they've done a brilliant job. I think this is really the pinnacle this year because the team is playing fantastic football. I think Napoli are playing the same brand of football that we played prior to and during the European Championships both in Serie A and the Champions League. So this is a, a team that can achieve anything. You know, we mustn't say too much because we're a little bit superstitious. But uh, regardless of that, the hope is, with regards to the Italian national team, that Italian teams can do well. But of course, we'd like to have a few more Italians in the, in the side. That would be a bit better for us. Five minutes to go in the press conference any further questions if there are otherwise we can call things to a close away you go good evening it's been more than a decade since naples hosted uh, an italy game there's uh, a lot of excitement surrounding the uh, game do you feel this responsibility to come and play in such an important venue I've played in Napoli many times with uh, the Italian national team and there's always been a great crowd and we want the same to come to pass tomorrow night. It's the first game in our European qualifying campaign and so of course we want to have a great crowd that will get behind us right from the word go. We need to produce a big performance to try and br take them with us. But I do think it will be a wonderful evening.